Loving Father, we come before your throne in Jesus' precious name. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us once again into your presence. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will minister to us. Lord, you know our deepest longings. You know our agonies, Lord, the things that are bothering our minds. At the same time, Lord, we also not know that you are in charge of everything, Lord. Nothing has gone out of your hand, out of your control. We pray that you will step into our circumstances, Lord. We believe that you are going to step into our circumstances. And you are going to do a mighty work in our lives. Lord, speak to us. Open our eyes of understanding. Help us to be the doers of your word. Let your name alone be glorified. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will take full control of this service. We surrender our lives to the authority of your word. Let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' precious name, we pray this prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know if you're really glad in the presence of God. I believe the Lord will speak to us this morning. This is the first day of the new month. And I believe the Lord will do his mighty work in us and through us. The title that I want to present to you is this. The Lord who revives. The Lord who revives. Let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. Let me read it for you. For thus saith the Lord, high and lofty one, that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. To revive the heart of the contrite ones. We find two words, significant words in this verse. Number one, revive. Revive. Two words. Probably the last line in your Bible. The last phrase of this verse. Revive. Revive. This is the month of reviving. Somebody say amen. amen. The Lord is going to revive all those things that are going to die or already dead. You shall experience reviving in your life. How many of you believe your dead situations shall be revived by the Lord? It is not man who is going to revive it. He cannot. But the Lord God who creates things in your life and recreates things in your life will revive your hopes. How many of you believe this morning? Hallelujah. Especially, you know, I was this morning as we were worshipping, the Lord reminded me of a verse mentioned in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 2. Nehemiah was up to a task of Rebuilding the walls, the broken walls of Jerusalem. And he did not have enough manpower to build the wall. And he did not have enough army power to protect those people who built the wall. Because he knew the enemies when they come to here, the walls are, built, are being built. And they will surely step in and they will try to create havoc and stop the good work that he has started. And these are the words of the enemies of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 2. If you have taken the, your, that passage, would you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 2. Probably some of your conditions are this. Probably you, are, you have entered into something good for you. Good for the family. Good for your business. Good for your job. And you have heard enemies speaking to you. Let me read it from verse 1. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth and he took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren with the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Are you being called as feeble ones? This is how Nehemiah was called by his enemies. Feeble Jews. Feeble Jews. Dear brother, dear sister. Dear child of God, probably you've been mocked by others saying, you're weak, feeble. Hallelujah. Will they fortify themselves? They're mocking your every good move. 
Your good efforts are mocked by others. How do they mock? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in the day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps? The rubbish which are burnt. Nehemiah was building the wall with burnt stones. He was building with hope. And he heard the threatening voice. He heard the discouraging words. The discouraging words was, will they revive the stones? Are you building up something and you heard somebody say, you will never revive the things. Hallelujah. Probably reviving the, the, li the life of your children, their education, their job. Probably you are seeking, probably you are, you are trying your heart, your best to do good to your children. To build up your family. And you heard somebody say. Will they revive the stones which are burnt. Which are in heaps. Yes it's true. Once upon a time it was good. But the enemies have destroyed. Now it is burnt. And you are trying to rebuild. I believe the Lord will help you revive. Because he is the one who revives. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. The Lord will revive your dead hopes. What does the Bible say in Isaiah 58 verse 8? Then shall thy light break forth as a morning. Thine health shall spring forth speedily. Hallelujah. This is a word to someone here. Hallelujah. Your health shall spring up speedily. The Lord will revive your health. You shall not be given at the choice of your disease. You sh your end shall not be according to the choice of your disease. The Lord has chosen you. The Lord's hand is upon you. When God's hand is upon you, He shall revive you. No matter what your enemies have said, no, no matter what, your, what you have heard with your ears and seen with your eyes. This morning, believe what the Lord says. Never believe the report of the doctor. Your life is in the hands of God, not in the hands of your doctor. Or in the medicine that you are taking. Hallelujah. Somebody say my God will revive me. Because he is the one who created me. He is my creator. He will revive me. Because he is the God who revives you. He is the Lord who revives you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Think about the statement the word mentioned in the verse. The Lord revives the humble and contrite ones. Can anybody, can anyone ever imagine to think about humble ones? But the Lord thinks about the humble ones and the contrite ones. Are you seated in the presence of God as rejected by others? As humble, broken, contrite. This morning the Lord looks at you and says, I will revive you. I will revive you. The one who says to you that I will revive is not an ordinary one, but the almighty God. Awesome one. The mighty one of Israel. Hallelujah. He will revive you, brother. Why bothering about those words? Why are you bothered about those words? Those words of discouragement. This morning, get encouraged in the presence of God. The Lord says, I will revive you. I will revive you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be going through tough times. Your financial condition. You've hit the rock bottom. And you have no means of hope for tomorrow. Regarding the expenditure for the ex education of your children. Probably nobody knows. Your neighbor doesn't know what you're going through financially. But God says, I will revive you financially. I will revive your health. I will revive your dead hopes. All your endeavors, all your efforts shall become fruitful. And you shall be established by the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Look at the words mentioned here. The spirit and heart. What does the Bible say? Isaiah 57 verse 17. The last phrase. To revive the spirit and to revive the heart. These two words talks about something inside of a person. Heart is inside and the spirit is inside. 
God alone can see your inside, brother. Sister, God alone can see your inside. Probably you have put a mask showing that you are happy. Everything is okay. To the onlookers, you show that you are all is well. But God looks at your heart. God looks at your heart. Man looks at your face and judges your words. But God looks at your heart. You're deep down, you're broken. Your heart is broken. You're contrite inside of you. And you feel there's no hope for tomorrow. The Lord will revive you. The Lord sees your hidden condition. The Lord sees your inside. He sees your mourning. He sees your groaning inside of you. And he will revive you. How many of you believe this morning? We have a God who looks into our heart and scans our anxieties. If you only try to share with your anxieties, you will be, you'll become a nobody to them because everyone has their own headaches and homework. And they cannot try to help you. After all, what they can say? Brother, I will pray for you. What more can they say? They too have their homework and heartache. This morning the Lord says, I see your heart and I see your spirit. The Bible says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing he ever lives to make intercession of him. He can save you. He can deliver you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the uttermost. Thank you Lord. Look at the word mentioned in this verse. I will dwell. The Lord dwells in two places in this verse. Number one, he dwells in high and holy place. And not only that, he says, I will dwell with him. With him whose heart is contrite. Do you know what is the meaning of the word dwelling? Is shakan. Shakan. To stay or sit in one location, the place of residence. Shakan means, this is the word used here. It means to stay or sit in one location, a place of residence. I believe this month the Lord is going to intervene in our lives more than ever before. How many of you believe? The Lord will intervene in your life. The Lord will dwell in your life more than ever. Hallelujah. How many of you believe, really believe this morning? When, 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 when I was taking these notes, I felt the Lord urging me to, to meditate on this. And I felt the Lord you know, giving me an assurance that he will dwell with me, with this church, which each one of us, with the person sitting next to you, the Lord will dwell with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's not going to dwell as an ordinary person, but as the reviver. Probably maybe your friends, your doctors, the specialist ones. Hallelujah. You've been with them, but no change. No change. Hallelujah. If you tell them your heartache, if you, if you tell them that you have a heartache, they'll ask you to go for a CT scan. And they will threaten you saying you have a heart attack. If you, say, if you go and tell them that you have a headache, they will advise you go to go for an MRI. All the more you get sick in your mind. This is what man can do. Never expose your weakness, your inabilities, your frailties to any man. This month decide in the presence of God. Lord, I will dwell with you. I will share my weaknesses with you. I will not share my weaknesses with anyone else, Lord. I will share it only with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Probably all this while you've been walking on the water. And you started to see the things around you and you started to sink. In the waters. And people have started to see you sinking this morning. The Lord says, I will pull you out. And make you walk again. I will revive you. And all the onlookers shall see you walking on the same waters that you've been drowning. And they will declare that I am with you. This time you're not going to walk alone. The Savior, the Son of God, the Kurios will stand with you. He will lift you up. Hallelujah. Are you discouraged about the words of those people? Probably who profess that they are loved ones to you. But all the more trying to discourage you. This morning the Lord will revive you. Thank you Lord. Probably things are converging on your doom. Instead of your bloom. 
Probably things are going towards defeat instead of a new beginning. Hallelujah. This morning the Lord will grant you the victory that you are expecting in your life. Or probably the, the victory that your enemies doesn't want in your life. The Lord will revive you. Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. But this morning we need to understand one thing. Why did they become humble? Why did they become contrite? There is a reason. There is a reason for each fall. There is a reason for each defeat. Why did they experience this contrite? And why did they experience this humbling experience? If you look at the verse 1 of Isaiah 57. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 1. The Bible says the righteous perisheth and no man lays it to heart. Merciful men are taken away. None considering the righteous is taken away from the evil. Why did they ever face such humiliating experience? The reason is they failed to recognize righteousness. They failed to recognize spiritual things. They failed to recognize the righteousness of God. The Bible says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. They forgot about it. That's what the Bible says. No man take it to heart because righteous man perish it. The middle part of this verse. None considering that righteous is taken away. All they are bothered about is worldly things. Riches, wealth. They are not bothered about righteous things. And that's the reason why they have ended up in contrite state. That's the reason why they have ended up in broken state. This morning the Lord says, think about the spiritual things in your life. Don't be bothered about physical things. Your cars, your money, mobile phone. All those things are material things. Shift your focus from material things to spiritual things. That's what the Lord says. For the word righteous, the Hebrew word is sadiq. Hebrew word is sadiq. This word sadiq can be divided into two parts. If we understand this in this, in this way, the Hebrew word study, we can understand the nature of a righteous man. Sadiq word can be divided into two. Sad plus kuf. Sadiq. Sad plus kuf. The firstly, sad, which means to cut and to destroy. Sad means to cut and to destroy. Secondly, the letter kuf, which stands for monkey, that denotes the deeds of the flesh, or uncontrollable actions. Kuf, it talks about monkey that deals with uncontrollable actions and the deeds of the flesh. And who is a man who is called righteous? And who is sadiq? A righteous man is the one who destroys the deeds of his flesh. A righteous man is the one who destroys the deeds of his flesh. This is the, one of the Hebrew meanings of the name sadiq, of the word sadiq. How many times our uncontrolled tongues have destroyed good relationships. Created rift between you and your spouse. Created a distance between you and your children. And you and your parents. Uncontrolled actions. This morning the Lord tells us, control the uncontrolled actions. Be a sadiq, be a righteous man. The one who takes control the deeds of the flesh. Bible says if we walk by the spirit. We shall destroy. We shall mortify the deeds of the flesh. We are the children of God. What is the calling of the children of God? He who are, he, those who are led by the spirit of God. Are called the children of God. What is the evidence that you are the child of God? You should be, I should be led by the Holy Spirit. And this is the blessed experience that each one of us can ever experience in our lives. Holy Spirit is a, such a blessed person. He wants to speak to us in every step of the way. In every action that we do. He wants to direct us. He is so, he's a, such a loving father. He knows that we are about to face something new. 
but that is not new to him because he already because Jesus has already gone through that path and he uh, the holy spirit is the spirit of Jesus Christ and he resides in us Jesus Christ resides in us through the holy spirit he has gone through what we are going through or we are about to go through and he tells us what we should do and when we follow what he says when we do what he says we destroy the deeds of the flesh this morning get connected with the holy spirit get connected with the lord let every step of your way be controlled by the holy spirit that's the calling that's your calling and my calling thank you lord unrestricted freedoms to the deeds of the flesh is a reason for brokenness and deadness unrestricted freedom thank you lord paul says all things are lawful to me but all things are not expedient all things are lawful to me but all things are not expedient i will not be brought under the power of any a righteous man a sadik he says i will not be brought under the power of any and he says hallelujah in the same in the first corinthians chapter 6 verse 12 and 10 23 24 these two verses are there in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 12 23 and uh, chapter 6 verse 12 and chapter 10 verses 23 and 24 he says all things are lawful for me but all things are not expedient and all things are lawful for me but all things edify not do you know something unedifying things are trying to control us if we fail to control the deeds of the flesh the deeds of the flesh will control us and we become the part of part, part we become the partakers of demonic nature instead of god's nature the reason why we are broken down the reason why we are in contrite state we have let the uncontrollable things the the deeds of the flesh to overtake us thank you lord never lose sight of spiritual things never ignore spiritual things get interested in spiritual things thank you lord if anyone gives heed to the voice of the lust of the eyes lust of the flesh pride of life he will become the partakers of demonic nature he'll be left to the end of the free choices of demonic nature thank you lord that's what we find in first few verses mentioned in isaiah chapter 57 verse 5 it talks about they are worshiping they have given themselves to inflaming idol worship that's what we see here they in verse 9 the last part it says they abase themselves even unto hell isaiah 57 9 but at, at this juncture steps in a group of people and to them the lord says i will revive you Who are those verse verse 13 I want you to look at this verse please Isaiah 57 verse 13 when thou criest let thy companies deliver thee but the wind shall carry them all away vanity shall take them but he that puts his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain in comes a group of people who trust in the Lord the the literal translation bible says He who takes refuge in me he would takes refuge in me KJV it says trust in me but literal translation equivalent to Hebrew says he would takes refuge in me the one who goes inside of me the one who takes refuge in me we are called to live in Christ when we live in Christ we show Christ to the whole world tell somebody brother you are God's advertisement tell somebody sitting next to you you are god's advertisement because you are inside of god how many of you believe i am god's adver- advertisement advertisement reaches the people before the product would reach i need to show forth who my god really is his nature his humility his purity his long suffering his meekness that's your calling and that's my calling He is Sadiq, the one who shows forth the God, the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have the image of God. You 
have you are branded by the lord you carry the brand name of your god in your office in your factory in your neighborhood in the playground you bear the image of god can somebody find out that you are a child of god we all say be a rome roman in your in rome but a child of god is a child of god in every place can you imagine shadrak meshak abednego they showed themselves as the child children of god the land of babylon they wouldn't compromise this month the lord says don't compromise with the things of the world stand out for god stand out for god even in spite of your contrite humble state what does this verse mean isaiah 57 13 those who take refuge in me they are contrite they are humble they are broken down shattered hopes but still they took refuge what does it mean they st- stood for the lord probably you're going through tough times this month the lord tells you if i want to revive you stand out for me live an uncompromising life the next person in your office in your school college neighborhood could be a christian believer even if he compromises don't compromise you don't compromise stand out for god never mind even if you're singled out for a doom i will revive your circumstance even nebuchadnezzar the one of the greatest kings ever lived on the face of the earth when he was against these three hebrew men he could not change the destiny he could control their present but could not control their future how many of you believe this morning if you stand out for the lord they may try to take possession of your present condition but they can never touch your future because your future is in the hands of god hallelujah never compromise this is the heartbeat of god this is the pulse of god this morning god wants us to live an uncompromising life never yield to temptations of the flesh when the temptation tries to knock your door say no to that i would rather die than to sin stand out for god stand out for holiness stand out for righteousness the lord will revive you revive you in such a way everybody will be amazed to see how god has exalted you if you believe it lift up your hands and say lord i will stand up for you i will stand up for you i will not compromise with the worldly standards i will stand out for you no matter what i am what state i am in right now lord thank you jesus can you imagine these people are willing to take refuge in the lord reflect the nature of god they were not in a good position when they took refuge in the law contrite ones and the lord says i will revive them i will revive them thank you lord dear young man young girl probably your mobile phone is corrupting your mind and your fa- parents your father mother doesn't know they don't know they don't know that your mobile phone is corrupting you stand out for the lord i will d- decide i will never touch this cursed phone again if it is going to defile me defile my holiness defile my consecration and dedication the lord will lift you up to an un- unimaginable height he will lift up you he will lift you up to an inaccessible height and he will place you on the pinnacle thank you lord heed to the voice of the holy spirit give heed to the voice of the lord this morning thank you lord thank you jesus the lord has plans to lift you up revive you god wants to exalt you blessed be your name lord blessed be your name the lord shall revive you thank you jesus hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord i want to tell once more live a life of godliness holiness all through this month 
Every day when you get up from your bed. Let this be your motto. Lord, I'm going to stand out for you. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to live for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to share with you. Just three thoughts with you. How, to whom God revives. Who God revives. Number one. Come back to the Lord. When we come back to the Lord. The Lord revives. Hosea chapter 6 verses 1 and 2. The second thought. When we commune with the Lord. God revives us. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2. Number three. When we consecrate our lives to the Lord. Psalms 85 verse 6, 11, 12. Come back to the Lord. Commune with the Lord. And consecrate to the Lord. May the Lord help me share with this, these three thoughts with you. In my allotted time. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosea chapter 6 verse 1. Come let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath spitten. And he will bind us up. After two days. Will he revive us. In the third day. He will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. Shall we all read this verse together? Hosea chapter 6 verse 1. Here we go. Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up. And we shall live in this sight. Coming back to the Lord is a first step in experiencing reviving. How does the Lord revive a person? Coming back to the Lord. In returning to the Lord. The, look at this word. Let us return. Return means. We were with the Lord once upon a time. We have gone away now from the Lord. We are far away from the Lord. And the call to us is to come back to God. To be far away from God is to be far away from life and light in life. If I am far away from God, I am far away from real life. Not the life that I have in my body, but real life. Real fulfillment. If someone is far away from God, he is not in the light. He is far away from the light. That means he is close to darkness. This morning the Lord says, come back. I want to revive you. I want you to write down this few lines. If we delay, we delay reviving if we delay the returning. We delay the reviving if we delay the returning. In, that means you set the timetable for your reviving. I set the timetable for my reviving. It is not the Lord. The Lord is ever ready to revive me. Provided if I am willing to return to the Lord. In our salvation God came to us. He came to me when I was you know, drowning in the miry clay of sin, and he lifted me up and he took my place. He died on the cross. He was buried. On the third day, he rose up. Now he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's up to me now to go back to him. It's time for me to go back. Are you far away from God? How long are you going to be far away from God? You're far away from this word. It's been a long time since you knelt down and prayed to God. It's been a long time that you really lifted up your hands and said, I surrender all. All this while you've been listening to music. Listening to worship songs. You've been, worship, you've been listening to worship songs, but actually you're not worshipping the Lord. You're listening to the music. Your heart is connected with the tune, but not to the words of the tune. This morning the Lord says, come back. Come back. Don't delay your reviving. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Think about Naomi. Instead of being in Bethlehem Judah. She went away. Far away. Went to Moab. She lost her blessings. One by one. One by one. Had she returned. When she lost her husband. 
her sons would have survived. She lost each one one by one. Hallelujah. Don't delay your reviving. Come before the worst could attack come to you. Please come back to God before the worst could come to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some of you are residing in a wrong place. The right place for you is God's presence. The Lord alone can give you the light and life that you are expecting in your, in your life. Thank you, Lord. Yesterday, one of the young boys came to me and asked me, and he told me like this. Brother, I'm really bored up with my spiritual life. He was speaking, speaking out his heart. I'm sick of praying, reading the Bible. Why should I? Always pray and go out. Read the word and go out. I'm really sick of this. Look at my friend. He watches movies. He goes here and there. He gets angry. He speaks all sorts of bad words. But when I commit or involve in any one of these things, I lose my peace. In fact, I'm really under pressure. A spiritual life. And deep down within my heart, I was praying to God, Lord, somehow I should convince this brother. Then it's a thought flashed to me. And I shared with him and he got convinced. And that thought really blessed me. And the thought is this. Don't run a petrol bike with a diesel oil. You buy a bike that runs in petrol. And if you try to pour diesel in it and try to run it. It will run for a while. But after that engine will get seized. We are created in the image of God. And there's a God shaped vacuum inside of me and only God can fill that vacuum. And if I try to fill it up with something else, with disobedience, with worldly things, with cinema, with worldly friends, worldly things, that bike will run for a while. New bike, okay? Fair enough, it will run for a while. After that, it will come to an eternal halt. And I shared with the guy and he understood. And he understood only God, only the spiritual things will help him, help him survive. Dear brother, dear sister, some of the time, many times we think this Bible, you know, becomes a bitter pill to few. They say, why should I always read this word? Why should I bend down and kneel and pray? Why shouldn't I enjoy this world? It's like running your bike, petrol bike with diesel oil. You will end up in destruction. You will end up in destruction. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ alone can give you the life that you are expecting. Probably you have come into the presence of God. Nobody knows that you are trying alcohol, drugs. Far away from God. It will run for a while, but it will come to an eternal halt. Nobody can help you out. Nobody can help you out. And this morning the Lord says, come back. Come back to the Lord. Hallelujah. Return for the word return. The Hebrew word used is shuv. Shuv. That, is means, that means, shuv means sheen, bav, beth. That means returning back. I'm um, turning back to the previous state of place. Returning back to the previous state of place. That's what we saw. It says, leave immediately for the previous dwelling place. Burn or destroy the place where you're presently living and turn around. Burn around the place where you're presently living and turn around to the place where you were previously residing. Return to the Lord. They were with the Lord. They went far away from God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Dear brother, dear sister. Burn away the present place. Throw it out in Jesus' name. Destroy them. Come back to God. You shall experience reviving. You shall experience reviving in your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why did the Lord smite them? Why did the Lord tear them? The Bible says, let us come, return to the Lord. For he hath torn. Look at this two words mentioned in the Bible. He, for he hath torn and he hath smitten. Two words, torn and smitten. 
Why did the Lord do to them? What was the reason why? What was the reason that the Lord had to tear them and smite them? In the previous chapter, chapter 5 verse 13, we find the reason why God tear them. Why God smote them. Chapter 5 verse 13, when Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound. There was sickness and wound with the people of God. And tearing and smiting is the only way for cure. Probably the, you may feel the Lord is chastising you. He's not chastising you for your destruction. He's chastising you in the sense to remove the unwanted things. This wound full of pus. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to deal with you. And if you have come into the presence of God chastised by the Lord this morning, the Lord says, I chastise you not because of my anger, but because of my love. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, if a child, if a, if a, if a believer doesn't experience chastisement, he is an illegitimate child. For, in other words, his father and mother are different ones. The Lord says, I will never be a father to them. His father is other than is someone other than God. If you are seated in the presence of God, as smitten by God, torn by God, it doesn't mean God hates you. He loves you. He wants you to live. He doesn't want you to die in your sickness. In your spiritual state. Sick spiritual state. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5. We all know this verse. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises, putrefying souls. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Let us come back to God. He will heal us. Thank you, Lord. And that's a wonderful hymn that we used to sing softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. See on the portals he's watching and wa waiting. Watching for you and for me. Come home. Come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling us. Calling us, come home. Just want to share with you two points in this first one. Come back to the Lord. Number one, how should we come back to God? Number one, accepting our faults. Number two, seeking God's face. How should we come back to God? The last verse in chapter 5, or the verse before chapter 6, verse 1. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Acknowledge their offense. This is the first step in coming back to God. Number one, accept, accepting our faults. Thank you, Lord. As long as we stick to our self-righteousness, which are filthy rags, we cannot go close to God. We need to accept our faults and accept that the Lord is just and righteous and we are sinful. Not accepting the offenses creates an empty space or a distance between you, between us and our God. Thank you, Lord. Do you know something? Accepting our faults is a mighty force that destroys, that destroys the mighty weapon of guilt and condemnation. When we accept our, guilt, our faults, our offense, it destroys guilt and condemnation. Guilt and condemnation is a mighty weapon in the hands of the devil. But when we accept our faults of offense, thank you Lord. Accepting our faults is an antivirus that eliminates guilt and condemnation. Why did Saul got destroyed? Because he failed to accept his fault. He justified. He justified his offense. Whereas on the contrary, David, he accepted his faults and wrote Psalm 51. And he said, against thee and thee alone have I sinned, Lord. He accepted. And God revived him. And he is still one of the greatest kings ever lived in Israel. 
a most respected king even now in 2018 he's the most respected king in israel because he accepted his fault the child of god never become a prey of self righteousness there's a snare that the enemy has placed the moment you sin do you know what the snare the snare of covering your fault bible says proverbs 8 28:13 he who covers his sin shall not prosper but he who confesses it and forsakes it shall have reviving shall have reviving 1 john chapter 1 verse 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and the bible the last phrase of verse 10 it says and his word shall be in us if we confess our sins thank you lord thank you lord i want you to read please read jeremiah chapter 3 verse 13 jeremiah if you have your bibles would you open your bibles to jeremiah chapter 3 verse 13 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Only acknowledge thine iniquities. That thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God. And hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. You have not obeyed my voice said the Lord. Turn O backsliding children said the Lord. For I am married unto you. Look at the heart. of god for i married unto you and i will take you one of a city and two of a family and i will bring you to zion and i will give you pastors according to your to my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding everything starts with acknowledging never justify your actions dear children you dis- if you disobey your parents you are you're trying to cover your your you, you are disobeying the voice of god and if you justify your disobedience you're heading towards destruction go to your parents and say dad mom i'm sorry i have disobeyed you you shall be rebuilt you shall be blessed by the lord acknowledge your offense acknowledge your offense Thank you Lord. The second thing is seeking God's face. If we don't acknowledge, accept our offense, we cannot seek God's face. This is the second thing that we do in coming back to God. When we acknowledge our sins, confess to God, God cleanses us. We become holy. Think about a prodigal son. He went far away from his father. What did he say? I will go to my father. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against thee. When he decided to acknowledge and accept his faults, he had the opportunity of seeing his father's face. Because with sin in our hearts, we cannot look at this face of God. Bible says, "Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God face to face." What is the reason why? What is the reason that God gives for you to return? The Bible says, that we read Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 3, verse 14. For I am married unto you. Look at the heart of God. For I am married unto you. We are the bride of Christ. Our bridegroom wants our fellowship. I want you to think spiritually. Spiritually. Hallelujah. We are the bride of Christ. I am the bride of Christ. I need to see him face to face. Face to face. Accept your fault. Seek God's face. Seeking God's face is the only solution for our dead circumstance. The key that God gives us this morning is to seek God's seek his face. seek my face if my people who are called by name shall humble themselves and seek my face i will heal them i will revive them accept your fault and seek god's face 
Thank you, Lord. Some of us, we grow faint after accepting and seeking God's faith. We grow, grow faint. But this morning, the Lord says, the Lord shares with us the heaven's rule, the heaven's law. Do you know what's that? Do you want to know heaven's law of reviving us when we come back to him, accepting our faults and seeking his face? Look at verse 2 of Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6 verse 2. What does the Bible say? After two days will he revive us. That means on the first day there's no reviving. On the second day there's no reviving. What does that mean? God expects continual obedience. Continual seeking his face. Most of the time we want instant, instant healing. Instant remedy. Because we've gone, to, gone used to this. That's what we find in this world. That's a different sub subject. Sometimes when we say, Lord, I will obey you. We obey for a day, for a minute, for a second. And we expect God to do a miracle in our lives. That doesn't, God doesn't work in that way. Please bear it in your mind. What did Joshua tell the people of Israel? Sanctify yourself today. Tomorrow shall be revival for you. Do you know why God doesn't want to, God doesn't want to, wants us to experience revival the moment we get sanctified? Do you know the reason why? Because our attitude will get changed towards sanctification. If I need, if I need deliverance, if I need deliverance, I will sanctify myself for a while. And God delivers me and step into my disobedience again. And God doesn't want that to happen. If you are a parent, if you know that you, the nature of your child, your son, the nature of your son is get dad's favor and step, you know, do whatever you like. If you please daddy, you'll, if you, you know, the other day I'm just sharing with what I experienced. I was in a, I was in a, you know, real problem. I just want to prostrate before God and and worship God. And I felt the Lord speaking to me, "Don't prostrate." And I said, "Why are you saying me like this, Lord? Don't prostrate." This is the highest form of worship, shaka, falling down before you and worshiping Lord. That's the word that you have used. And worship the Lord in the uh, in spirit and in truth. Worship thou the Lord. The shaka of to fall down, face down. Why are you stopping me? And I felt the Lord spirit ministering to me. The purpose why you are falling down before me is not the purpose of the shaka, the word shaka. Why do you fall before me? For a healing, for a deliverance. I, I got convicted. I said, Lord, I will never fall before you just for the sake of receiving something from your hand. I will fall down before you as a token of my surrender to you. I said, Lord, I will never fall down before you just to receive something from your pocket. I will fall down before you just to please your heart. Whether you bless me or not, that is immaterial to me. I will please your heart with my life, with my surrender. When I did that, I felt the immense presence of God. I cannot forget that moment even now. Dear child of God. If you are living for the Lord, holy. Continue to live holy for the Lord. The enemy, devil will come and whisper you. Yes, what, what, happened to your, what happened to your willingness to follow the Lord? You are following the Lord. Nothing has happened. Wait for two more days. Enemies were rejoicing. Hell was rejoicing for two days. But on the third day, the risen Lord showed up and defeated the enemy. The Lord shall revive you. Continue to live holy. Return back to God. Acknowledge your faults. Seek His face. The blessing of this reviving is, thank you Lord. Living in the sight of the Lord. The blessings of this reviving is living in the sight of the Lord and following to know the Lord. Verse 2, verse 3 of chapter 6, Hosea. After two days will he revive us 
in the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight living in his sight is the highest calling for a church of god because that's a call of a bride the calling of the bride to live before the sight of god face of god thank you lord thank you lord you shall live you shall live in his sight what a blessed experience having god right before us face to face experience and living in that experience living in the sight of god thank you lord i want to i want to tell you dear brother dear sister dear church of god the greatest blessing is to live before the lord not before your blessings fine you need that i need that we need that everyone needs but the greatest blessing is to have god before us to have god to have the relationship with god hallelujah number 2 following to know the lord verse 3 let us know let us press on to know the lord let us press on to know the lord this is the blessings of the bride of christ tell somebody you are the bride of christ come on wake up somebody and say you are the bride of christ you are espoused to jesus christ i am espoused to my jesus christ betrothed to jesus christ i'm called i'm called to live before him and to know him following to know the lord the second point that i want to share with you is this commune with the lord blessed be the name of the lord commune with the lord habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2 habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2 Thank you Lord. Oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known in wrath remember mercy. Shall we all read this verse once again? Oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known. We have come to the middle of this year. The first 6 months are over. We have stepped into the second phase of this year. We are on the threshold of the the second part of this year. And this is the right time to offer this prayer to the Lord. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. The Lord is going to revive us. How many of you believe? and he's going to revive us in the middle of the year. this is the promise of god to us this is the word from the lord this morning to us in the middle of the year and the first day of the month of july or the beginning of july the lord says i will revive you in the midst of the years i shall revive you how many of you believe tell somebody revival reviving has started in your life come on church the lord will begin the reviving the lord will begin the reviving are you happy about this not man not your boss not your neighbor not your spouse not your children not your parents but the lord will revive but the lord will revive probably you've been waiting for a promotion probably you are waiting for a revival in your life this morning the lord says i will revive you i will revive you you shall experience reviving in the midst of the years thank you lord this is the second step in the in the in our reviving when we come back to god god revives us and we shouldn't stop with that we need to go deeper deeper into the relationship with god after coming back after accepting our offense seeking god's face we need to commune in every phase we find god reviving us we find here habakkuk communing with god if you look at the book of habakkuk we can find out we can understand it's all about the conversation between the prophet and god nothing more nothing less if you have your study bible you can find out the first few verses habakkuk speaks and the next few verses god speaks you can find it out 
But if you have an ordinary KJV or NKJV, you cannot find it out. But if, you, if we analyze, if we read it all through the three chapters of Habakkuk, we can find Habakkuk speaking to God and God speaking to him. And the, and the second thing, he speaks to God and God speaks to him. This morning, the Lord says, if you are a person who is willing to spend time with God, communing with him, you shall be revived. This is the month that we need to spend more time in communing with the Lord. In having a conversation with God. It's enough that we stop, talk to people. It's enough that we talk to the higher officials. It's time for us. For us to talk to our God. Commune with the Lord. I want to share with you two points. Praying to the Lord. And praising the Lord. These are the two ways that we can commune with the Lord. And we find these two things in this, in this book. Habakkuk. Chapter 1, 2 and 3. He communed with God by praying to Him. And praising Him. Thank you Lord. Praying to God and praising Him. The Lord is calling us. For a task of communing with Him. We need to spend more time praying to God this month and praising the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are willing to spend more time in the presence of God this month? Especially this month. The Lord shall revive you in the midst of the years. He starts in chapter 1 verse 1. Chapter 1 verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk, a prophet upon Shigio Noth. Prayer of Habakkuk. As I told you, this Habakkuk is a tremendous book that records the conversation between the prophet and the Lord. Bible commentators say Habakkuk is one of the least known prophet in the Bible. Habakkuk is one of the least known prophet in the Bible. But do you know something? God had time for him when he had time for God. You may be least in your home, least in your office, in your neighborhood. But if you take time to speak to God, I believe, I, will, I assure you, the Lord God Almighty will have time for you. People may not have time for you. People may not have time for you. When I was studying, one of my teachers told me a story that took place in his village. One of the young boys got married, it seems. And he invited all the elders, all the big shots. And he gave the invite, invite to a very old person was disregarded by the society. But this old man loved this young boy very much. And this boy, young boy, out of obligation, he goes to that person and invites him. On the day of wedding, everybody gave their gifts. And the very next day of this marriage, that old man dies. And that old man came and looked, and on the day of his wedding, this old man came up to him and looked at him, smiled at him, and he wished him, and he said a word of blessing. And the next day he passed away. And this young boy knew that he was a despised man in the village. And he wouldn't want to even look at him and smile at him. He, dis he literally despised him. And this broke this elderly man very much. And he went home and he died the next day. And this boy, and he looked at the gifts that was given to him. Big shots, all those things. And he found out that this elderly person had given 100 times what the big shots that he thought would bless him more. And he felt really hurt. For not respecting that elderly man. Dear child of God. Sometimes when we are rejected by the world. We feel all alone. Nobody wants to talk to us. When you hit the rock bottom. Or when you end up in failure. Nobody wants to spend time with us. With you. And this morning the Lord says. I have time for you my child. I have time for you. Spend more time with me. You may be rejected, despised by others. But I have time for you. Dear father, you may be despised by your very own son. He wouldn't even want to receive your call. The moment he sees your name on his mobile phone, he disconnects your line. Some of you are going through this. Probably you feel like nobody's willing to say praise the Lord. Nobody is willing to say hi. How are you? This morning the Lord says, I am willing to inquire about you. Habakkuk was the least 
known person in the Bible, least known prophet in the Bible, but God had time for him. He spoke to God and God spoke back to him. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Only those whose life is full of conversation with the Lord will enjoy reviving. Will enjoy reviving. What was the conversation that he had? Look at what he says in chapter 1 verse 2. He says, O Lord, how long shall I cry? Thou will not hear, even cry out to thee of violence. Thou will not say, why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. They are that rise up strife and contention. Look at the words that he uses. He uses the word. He says, Lord, I see violence. I see iniquity. I behold grievance. I see spoiling and violence. There are those that rise up strife and contention. Probably you are going through the same thing in your life. You are for, you are for peace and they are for war. When you stand for peace, they speak against you. This morning, commune with the Lord. Don't talk to them. There's no point in convincing them. Spend more time talking to God. The Lord will revive you. The Lord will revive you. Thank you, Jesus. Don't spend time with those useless people. They're not going to get changed. But instead, talk to God. Talk to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Look at what he says. Thank you, Lord. Why do you force me to look evil, Lord? Why am I staring trouble in the face of the day after day? We are asking the same question to God. Lord, I, when I come into your presence, when I lift my hands and worship, I feel your hand touching me. I feel your presence, Father. But nothing goes or nothing moves on after that. I feel like you are really silent in my case. You are not involved into my world. That's what Abaguk says. He says, Lord you are silent. You are uninvolved in my world. I am crying to you day and night. This is probably this is your condition. And this morning the Lord says, I will revive you. I will revive you. And he says in verse 4, the law of this world has become slack and judgment does not prevail over the evil. Are you facing this in your life, in your, especially in your office? You are bypassed. When it comes to promotion, you are bypassed. Someone else who is ungodly takes up a higher position. Hallelujah. The law of this world has become slack, but the, law, the Lord will fight your case. He will grant you justice. Thank you, Lord. Spend more time in speaking to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In verse 5, Prophet Habakkuk expresses his shock over God's choice of instrument of judgment. People of God, they sinned against the Lord. They went far away from God. And God pronounced judgment. And God raised up an uh, insignificant army, Babylonian army, Chaldean army, led by King Nebuchadnezzar. And he says, Lord, why? He was really shocked to, to, to understand God's choice of instrument that God used to pronounce judgment upon God's people. Probably you're really shocked. Probably things that have taken place in your life have shocked you. And you're not able to digest what has happened. If you're in that state, talk to God. Talk to God. The Lord will revive you. The Lord will revive you. Two thoughts that I shared with you. Praying to God. And praising the Lord. That's what the prophet did. He prayed to God. He praised God. He said, I will rejoice in the Lord. The God of my salvation. That's the hallmark of this man of God. The prophet of God. He prayed and he praised. He communed with the Lord. And he experienced revival in his life. Do you know what is the Hebrew word for, the, for prayer? The Hebrew word for prayer is palel. Pe lamed lamed. The Hebrew word study of this palel is this. Pe means 
to speak with our mouth. Pe means to speak with our mouth. Lamed means shepherd staff that speaks of authority. To speak with our mouth. Pe means to speak with our mouth. And Lamed means shepherd staff that speaks of authority. Two Lamets are used in this word Pelel. That means double Lamet speaks of ultimate highest authority. Two Lamets joined together that gives a reference or uh, inference saying double Lamet speaks of ultimate ath highest authority. So the, the Hebrew words, one of the Hebrew words that meanings is this Pelel, Pe, Lamet, Lamet. For the word praise is to speak with our mouth to the highest authority. This should be our intention, the attitude. When we kneel down before the Lord to pray, I should have an understanding in my mind. I am not speaking to an ordinary person. I am speaking to the highest authority in this world. Your boss may be an authority. Your neighborhood leader may be an authority. But when you kneel down, you are praying, you are speaking to the highest authority in this world. Babylonian king, King Nebuchadnezzar could be an authority in this world. Demonic forces may be authority trying to disturb your family peace. You may say, this, piece, this person has done something against my family. I can feel the wrath of that work. But let me assure you, when you kneel down, you are not praying to the ordinary authority or the authority, but the highest authority ever. How many of you believe this morning? Next time when you kneel down to pray, have this in your mind. I am speaking to the highest authority in this world. That's what, that's made, that made this prophet Habakkuk to pray to God. He saw Nebuchadnezzar, one of the greatest kings on the face of the earth, trying to invade Israel and he speaks to the greatest authority in his life. And God revived him. And the Lord God revived him. We need to recognize that. Thank you Lord. The word revive in this verse. Hallelujah. The word Lord revive. Oh Lord revive your work. Revive. Revive. One of the meanings of the word revive is to keep alive. This word keep takes, occurs in Genesis chapter 6 verse 19. Genesis chapter 6 verse 19. God talks about Noah. Speaks to Noah. God's, God tells him build up an ark of gopher wood. And God says, and bring into the ark every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort. Bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. Ark represents the church of God, the presence of God. If you are a father here in, this pres in, the, in God's presence representing your family, bring all your children into the presence of God. Bring your children into the presence of God. When you kneel down to pray to God, bring your children into the presence of God. They shall be kept alive. There's flood outside. Outside the ark, only destruction. But when you pray for your children, when you bring them into the ark of God's presence, into the church. I see two children here in front row, in the presence of God. We as parents, we take great care and concern in sending our children to the, their schools and tuitions. Even if we are sick or they are sick, we give them something, and make them fit for the day and send them to school. How much more we should bring our children to the church of God. Pity are those children who are left in the cricket field or the football ground on a Sunday morning or evening. If you're a godly father, mother, make sure that your children are found in the sanctuary of God. They shall be kept alive. Make sure that they are found in the sanctuary of God. The Lord shall revive them. Bring them into the presence of God. One of the reasons why I have been blessed is because of my father who always prayed for me. Every morning he would come to my bedside and he would be praying for me. I would be snoring to sleep, but my father would be praying for me. And that's the reason why I'm blessed. The greatest gift, a greatest legacy that you can ever leave for your children is your prayers for them. Take them into the presence of God. 
Bring them into the ark of God. And they shall be blessed by God. God shall revive them. Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Revive thy work. Thy work. It is God's work. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the midst of the years. In the midst of the years. I want you to look at that verse. In the midst of the years Lord revive. God revives us in the midst of the year. I was taking down notes. The places where the people of God were in the midst of adversities. Number one. In the midst of the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They were thrown into the midst of the fire. Daniel chapter 3 verse 22-23. They fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. In the life of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego we find prayer and praise. They were in the midst of the fire. One thought that went deep inside of my heart. Look at what Nebuchadnezzar says in verse 26 of Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3 verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar, have you taken this verse please? Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God. This went deep inside of my heart. He recognized whose servants they were. His eyes were opened. He thought these three men were his servants. That's what he says. That's what he, that's what he was told. His servants told him. Verse 27. Thank you Lord Jesus. Chapter 2 verse 27. The prisoners and governors, captains, counselors being gathered together. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Chapter 3 verse 12. Chapter 3 verse 12. And certain of the Jews. Certain of the Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Somebody comes and tells King Nebuchadnezzar. Certain of the people. Certain of the Jews whom you set them over the affairs. And he thought these three men were his servants. Subjects. That's why he commanded. This morning. The Hallelujah. Let me say this to you. Your adversaries shall see who is reigning over your life. Those people who harass you, torment you, put you into a burning fairy furnace. They shall see whose servants you are. They will not treat you as their servants. Actually, these three men the captives from Jerusalem. They were the servants of Nebuchadnezzar. But King Nebuchadnezzar understood that these three men were not his servants, but God's servants. Can you imagine? The highest authority in the land acknowledges those three Hebrew men were the servants of the Most High God. The Lord is going to prove to others who you really are. These three men, they did not compromise. They did not obey the words of the king. Because if they obey the words of the king, that will be disobedience to God's word. They said, rather let me be the servant of God's word than to be a servant of this king. Than to disobey the voice of God, the word of God. Let me disobey the words of this king. And God proved Hallelujah. In your office, your boss is going to see. Hallelujah. Your boss is going to see God's hand working on your behalf. Do you know something? Their consecration were rewarded. Their dedication. Their fellowship with God was rewarded. Thank you, Lord. That's what we find in chapter 3, verse 30. Verse 30. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. The Lord is going to promote you in your office. Mark these words. The Lord will promote you in your office. Hallelujah. Believe what God says. Thank you, Lord. You shall be promoted. Thank you, Jesus. The second time that we find in the midst 
of the adversity is Mark's Gospel chapter 6 verse 47. In the midst of the sea. Mark 6 47. When they, when even was calm. Mark's Gospel chapter 6 verse 40, 47. When even was calm, the ship was in the midst of the sea. The ship was in the midst of the sea. And it faced contrary winds. Do you know what happened? God stepped into their circumstance. During the worship time, this is what the Spirit of God was speaking, ministering. The Lord will step into your circumstance. This morning, the Lord says, I will step into your circumstance. You are in the midst of the sea. Facing contrary winds. Why did they venture out? The Lord told them. Do you know something? Real obedience will undergo a test. If, you are, if your obedience is real, genuine, you shall really face contrary winds. But let me assure you, this, the Lord will step into the lives of those people who face contrary winds just to obey God. The Lord will step into your circumstance. The Lord came walking and revealed to them who He really is. Hallelujah. Are you struggling hard just to obey God? You are obeying God and you are fighting terrible oppositions. The Bible says the Lord was walking. Mark's gospel chapter 6 verse 48. About the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them. They started out in the first watch. Now fourth watch has come. Thank you Lord. The first watch in Hebrew calendar, his timing is evening 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Second watch is 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. And the third watch is 12 to 3 p.m. 3 a.m. And the fourth watch is from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. For minimum, minimum they were toiling for nine hours. Nine hours toiling to obey what God said. The Lord told them, you go to the other side. All this while, dear brother, dear sister, dear child of God, you are, you've been struggling out to obey God. You're struggling in, in, in obeying to God. You know, you are obeying the Lord and you're facing struggle. Lord, I'm obeying what you say, but why am I facing struggle? Why am I facing strong contrary wings? Real obedience will face test. And real obedience and the test of real obedience Brings that person closer to God. The wind was contrary. They were moving forward. Wind was contrary. But Jesus was coming behind. That wind was drawing them more closer to Jesus. Dear child of God. The Lord will step into your circumstance. This morning the word of the Lord to you is this. I will step into your circumstance. Do you know what happened when God stepped into the circumstance? What was the, what was the thing that they experienced? Mark Gospel chapter 6 verse 51. When he stepped into the, their boat, the wind ceased. You shall experience the wind ceased in your life. This month, those contrary winds shall get abated. Those contrary winds will cease. How many of you believe? Tell somebody, your contrary wind shall cease. Tell somebody. Thank you Lord. Do you know what more they experienced? John, Apostle John, he writes so beautifully, chapter 6, John's Gospel, chapter 6. I want you to turn the pages of your Bible and look into this verse. John 6, 21. John chapter 6, verse 21. Same incident. Then they willingly received him into the ship. What is the next word? And immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Can you imagine? In the middle of the sea, Jesus walks on the water and he steps into the boat. The moment he stepped in, immediately the Lord is going to pull you out, some of you, from the middle of the sea experience to the shore. The Lord is going to step into your circumstance and immediately the Lord is going to grant immediate landing in your life. For nine, minimum nine long hours, they were toiling. Bible says 25 to 34 long they were able to move forward. Four to my, five miles, can you imagine? Four to five miles of journey, minimum nine hours. The moment the Lord stepped in, 
immediately they reach the store you are, some of you are going to experience shores in your life all through this time all those through this year you've been experiencing wind storms fear of death the lord is going to make you reach the shore peace hallelujah tell to yourself tell to your soul the lord shall grant me peace the lord shall grant me peace thank you lord thank you jesus the middle of the trouble the life of david middle of the trouble Psalm 138 verse 7 he says Psalm 138 verse 7 he says though i walk in the midst of trouble thou will revive me lord even if i walk in the midst of trouble thou thou will revive me we find prayer and praise communing with the lord even in this psalm too even in the in mark's gospel chapter 6 in the, even in that incident they they prayed to god and they praised god saying is the son of god God revived them. Even in this passage, Psalm 138, we find prayer and praise. First verse talks about praise. Verse three talks about prayer. And God stepped in into the midst of the trouble, and God revived him. Hallelujah! How did what? What does David say? The Lord shall perfect that which concerns me. God revived him. How? and he says the lord shall perfect that which concerns me i was meditating on this line a thought flashed my mind one of the things that god perfected in his life was his kingdom david was i mean david was to be the second leader in israel he was to be he was to become because first king had been saul the second king had to be has to be david but do you know something david was in the second king of israel he was just the third king of israel the second king was ishbosheth son of king saul that's what you find in second samuel chapter 2 verse 10 ishbosheth he reigned in israel for 2 years 2 years he reigned do you know something god perfected the kingdom of david do you know through whom god perfected this kingdom through abner the uncle of saul in fact this abner was the root cause of ishbosheth to be the king of the land thank you lord thank you lord shall we all read this second samuel chapter 2 verse thank you lord jesus verse 10 ishbosheth Saul's son was 40 years old when he began to reign over Israel. And he reigned 2 years, but the house of Judah followed David. Let's read verse 8. Who made this Ishbosheth the king of Israel? Verse 8 chapter 2 verse 8, but Abner the son of Ner, captain of Saul's host, took Ishbosheth the son of Saul and brought him over to Mahanaim and made him king over Gilead over the Ashurites over the Jezreel. Okay. Now we understand that Abner was a was a main person making Ishbosheth the king. But do you know what happened? Do you know how God perfected? God used the same Abner. God used the same person Abner to make David the king of the whole land of Israel. Would you read chapter 3 verse 12? Chapter 3 verse 12. and abner sent messengers to david on his behalf saying whose is the land saying also make thy league with me behold my hand shall be with thee to bring about all israel unto thee this morning the lord says the same people who plotted evil against you tried to stop god's destiny in your life god will use the same people in your life to anoint you to be the king of the land do you believe this morning the lord perfected the lord did a revival work in the life of david same people do you know something what is the name of the meaning of the name abner abner means my father is a lamp do you know what what is the meaning of this name says i am a son of a big shot a big a son of a big shot could be against you right now in your life but the lord will do use the same person to lift you up write down these words in your life when you if you are in the midst of your 
troubles. Do you know how God perfects? The same enemies who try to plot evil against you will become your friends. The Lord will use them to make you experience the fullness of life. Perfection. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the word for you, dear church, dear child of God. Believe what God says to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What is the blessing of this? What is the blessing of this? Reviving number one. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. From burden to bliss. Burden became bliss. And mourning became magnifying. Number one, chapter one, verse one. It starts with burden of our cook. And how did God revive the last verse? Chapter three, verse 18. He says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. He started with burden and ended with bliss. Rejoicing in the Lord. He started with mourning. And he said, oh Lord, how long shall I cry? Chapter one, verse two. The last verse in that book, chapter 3, verse 19. The Lord God is my strength. This is how God is going to revive you. Probably you've been, you felt weak all through this year. Hitherto, the Lord is going to strengthen you. You shall be strengthened by the Lord. Your burden shall become a bliss and your mornings shall become magnifying the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me quickly share with you the third point. Consecrate to the Lord. Consecrate to the Lord. Psalm 85 verse 6. Hallelujah. The Psalm of Korah. Sons of Korah. Psalm 85 verse 6. Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Will thou not revive us again, Lord? The truth that I want to share with you is, to, is this. Sowing the truth of God's word and bearing the fruit of God's truth. Sowing the truth of God's word, bearing the fruit of God's truth. The sons of Korah, they cried to God, Lord, revive us. Revive us. How did God revive them? Did God revive them? Yes. Look at the last verse. The, you know, in that psalm, it ends with blessing, reviving. But what are, what are the two, two things that they did in order to experience reviving? Number one, they sowed the truth of God's word. Look at verse 11. The truth shall spring out of the earth. Earth talks about our life. Man was created out of the dust of the earth. Earth talks about our heart. Luke's Gospel chapter 8 verse 15. Truth shall spring out from the earth. If there's, some, if, there, if there's a word called springing up, there's also a meaning called sowing. How shall a seed spring up without, without sowing? God's word is the truth. The truth should be sowed inside of our hearts. Thank you, Lord. That's what we find in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 to 11. But my word that goes forth from my mouth shall not come to me void, but it shall accomplish that which it please. Look at the comparison that God uses for his word in verse, in verse 10. Verse 10, For as the rain cometh down and snow from the earth, returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, maketh it bring forth the bud, and that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. The word, the seed inside the earth springs up. We need to, when we listen to the word of God, we should bring it, take it inside of our hearts. We shouldn't be mere listeners. Hear us, but the doers of the word. A consecrated life will never refuse the word. A consecrated life will never refuse the word. Thank you, Lord. Luke's gospel chapter 7 verse 30. Luke 7 30. The Pharisees, they rejected the counsel. They rejected the word. Rejected the word regarding that baptism. Probably some of you are seated in the presence of God. And you are postponing your baptism. This will end up in destruction this morning. The word of the Lord comes to you. Never refuse or never postpone your baptism. Accept the word. Number two, bearing the fruit of God's word. The truth shall spring out of the earth. 
dear brother dear sister if there's something that's that has to come out of my life is should be the word of god the word should be made flesh the word that is there inside of my heart should spring up and it should become flesh when i say flesh every action your action every action of mine should reveal god's word what is it i what should be my action hallelujah fear of the lord meekness and lowliness humility sanctified life thank you lord john 1:14 says and the word was made flesh this is what this is all about jesus christ the word became flesh the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory do you know something what is the real glory for us is to live the word of god the word should be made flesh that's our, that's what our pastor always teaches us that word should be the word that we receive should become flesh should become actions in our lives thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord jesus my time is up the blessing is this increase because of god's goodness and stability because of god's righteousness bible says in verse 12 yea the lord shall give you that which is good our land, land shall increase yield or increase our land shall yield or increase the lord shall give you that which is good consecrate your life obey yield your life to the authority of the god's word the lord will give you that which is good in his sight can you imagine if you if you are to give if you decide to give something to your son you wouldn't give to him or to her that which is good in his sight but in your sight this is what god says i'm going to give you something that is good in my sight if you consecrate your life to me and the stability because of god's righteousness verse 13 righteousness shall go before him and it shall set us in the way of his steps stability look at underline the word that he shall set us the lord shall set us thank you lord this is what god is telling us this morning surrender your life to me surrender your life to the authority of my word you shall be blessed you shall experience reviving thank you lord this is what god has given me and just have just shared with you i know for sure this is the word from the lord for each one of us here for this church for this congregation let god's name be glorified and magnified amen the presence of god is in this place church what be stand up to our feet i believe god has spoken to us this morning if you can give heed to the word of god live according to god's word you shall be revived and i believe one thing revival will take place only when you are in the presence of god if you have left the presence of god come back to god think of nagomi that day she left the house of provision she left bethlehem juda thinking that she could be provided she could meet her needs could be met in another place but she ended up in destruction she lost her husband she lost her two sons but she came back to the place and there she experienced a blessing in her life church i tell you one thing this morning if you have gone away from god if you've gone far away from god it's high time you come back to god the prodigal child he left the presence of his father his life was terrible but he realized one thing in my father's house this blessing is for me he came back to the father's house he acknowledged his faults and the bible says he re- experienced restoration revival church the lord is speaking to you this morning if you are experiencing hardships in life you need to examine your life this morning in the presence of god come back to jesus because he has a plan and he has a purpose in your life you shall live in the presence of god you shall be preserved in the presence of god take a decision this morning lord i'm sorry i've gone away from you lord the bible says when we go away from god all that we experience is destruction but there is life when we can draw nigh to god as every eye is closed in god's presence this morning tell the lord i want a close walk in you draw me closer to you god